Orn's Minotaurs got a cost reduction, so they should be a little bit more cost effective. I'm going to try one here against Real Survivor's Nurgle. Uh, Kugath also got a significant buff in multiplayer, picking up the Pestilent Decay area of effect direct damage. This is known as a more Ascension effect in colloquial terms in the Warhammer community. Uh, this is something that the regular great, uh, Exalted Great Unclean One had, the Lord level Great Unclean One. For whatever reason, Kugath did not. Now he does have it, meaning once he gets onto a point, he's going to be almost impossible to dislodge, and you won't want to fight around him in a blob at all. You'll be taking constant drain damage. Uh, we're going for domination today. I've also got both our Elite Regiment of Renown Infantry, Hellforce Hoach, Hellforged host on my side with two more exalted blood letters and flesh hounds and a soul grinder in my starting army in reserve we've got one more cheaper minotaur a couple of spawn a couple of dual hand weapon warriors a couple shielded warriors and three flesh hounds for kugath here he's also got of course the festering stooges exalted plague bears of nurgle another one of them three regular plague bears and two nurglings another exalted in reserve with four spawn of nurgle two forsaken two plague bearers and three nurglings let's jump in we're on the eye in the north map which i know some of you absolutely hate the terrain texture on this map hopefully it looks a little bit better on my current setup current rig but let's get two things it's going to be a little bit interesting you know nurgle of course you really don't want to fight them in a blob on the center objective as much as possible so i'm going to initially split push here and uh my opponent will go for the center with his disgusting Kugath blob, and I'm just going to go out to the sides and try and capture the side objectives, right? It's going to be more or less my MO here. These Hellforge hosts, the extra armor does come into play against uh, Plague Bears especially, but also Nurgle Forsaken and even the spawn to a degree. Um, that extra armor is within the range where it does help. I, I wish it would be a tiny bit more might make them a little bit too OP, but like 70 armor, 80 armor would be even better. 60's okay, but it's not incredible. It's about the same as something like Saurus, which is, uh, yeah, basically how it works is for non-AP damage on a hit, it will resist between 30 to 60% of non-AP damage. Whereas like the Soul Grinder having 90 armor will resist between 45 to 90%, right? Anything, like if you have 110 armor, then you would have 55 to 100%. If you're like a steam tank, 160 armor, that's what, 80 to 100%, right? So you start to get some diminishing returns on the top end, but at the same time, you're negating uh, just huge proportions of the non-AP damage that once you start to go over 100 is when it gets really, really good. But 60 is okay. It's definitely not terrible. It does exist, but it's also not incredible. Like, some high damage non-AP units like Forsaken and Spawn will still deal pretty good damage to them if given the right opportunity in, like, a rear charge or something. But right now, Bloodthirster just drops in uh, so far. Nothing too crazy. I'm just kind of harassing here. Nurgle doesn't have any mobility at all. No real flying units or anything to harass. So I can kind of dictate the pace of the engagement. There are some Plague Bearers and Nurglings being sent over here, and this is a very juicy force for me to come try and attack. Exalted Plague Bearers, Bloodthirsts are going to swing over there. Meanwhile, just developing some Hounds. A big old force of the Doggos to try and act as a giant mobile strike force. Just go wherever this blob isn't, right? And basically, what I need to do is cap the two side objectives for long enough, and then potentially I can go fight here in the center once I've held these two for long enough that... You know, I can potentially forsake this uh, one closer to my opponent's spawn here. Um, but for the time being, just getting some units together. The Soul Grinder kind of just hanging back, making sure this blob doesn't try and roll up onto my home objective. Meanwhile, Bloodthirst are continuing to attack here. Not really taking damage at all from the Nurglings and Plague Bears, but doesn't want to fight the spawn too much, or at least get surrounded and charged by them. So I'm going to pull away screen back through the blood letters spawn are gonna gonna pull back and once they break their charge order show their back to me of course i'm gonna go ahead and counter charge in now with the infantry support close by it be a pretty good engagement for me nurglings and the plague bears will definitely start to suffer pretty heavily but even the spawn will take significant damage from the exalted uh, blood letters Hellforged host also coming over this way the hounds likewise sweeping up and through meant to kind of catch if any reinforcement units were going to be coming from these sort of four points right here. I could potentially catch them. My opponent does summon off the back point to try and come up and around here. 
I can try and move through to intercept those relatively slow Plague Bears. Meanwhile, Kugath is chucking his uh, nuclear belly button lint nurglings into this little blob of exalted Plague Bears here. You can also see in the very far distance, nice shot landing there. My Soul Grinder is also shooting his little wrist rockets here. Little wrist cannon just into the Plague Bearers. He's not within range, thankfully, of the uh, Exalted Plague Bearers, although Real Survivor is going to notice this in just a second. And, or sorry, not Real Survivor, World Beater. Have I been saying Real Survivor? I apologize. Uh, World Beater here. Um, yeah, he is going to come forward and start to just shred my Soul Grinder with those uh, Plague Bearers and Festering Stooges and whatnot, but. This engagement is definitely going very well for me, although Nurgle had the initial capture weight to get this objective secured. Now, I definitely have enough capture weight wearing through all the Nurglings. That even the spawn are going down in a pretty big hurry. Tons and tons of flesh hounds here, providing cavalry level capture weight uh, on this objective. So, should be pumping up here pretty soon. Meanwhile, Soul Grinder doing a great job just distracting. It's also actually managed to rack up a good bit of value, 500 value on just sitting and shooting with its uh, wrist cannon, which is pretty decent, but definitely not wanting to take a straight-up shooting fight against a bunch of exalted plague bearers. That's not going to go well at all. Got some dual hand weapon warriors coming in for myself. Uh, these other exalted bloodletters just kind of hanging out over here, defending this objective number three. In case my opponent were to push over there, would at least run into some resistance. But uh, I'm starting to get a little bit cocky here in that I feel like if I deploy the Minotaurs, I could probably come in here and potentially beat down on Kugath and just take out the central force. Um, we'll see. I mean, I've basically completely uh, secured this objective at this point. Exalted Bloodletters screened out over here. They're taking some damage. They're not necessarily going to win this fight unless I give them some additional support. So, hence the Doggos go forth into the Bloodletters. <laughs> Sorry, the uh, Plague Bearers in support of the Bloodletters. Should be okay here. Hopefully we can even out that engagement a little bit more. But uh, yeah, getting a little bit crazy here with these Hellforge hosts charging in unsupported. This is definitely a huge mistake by me. I'm sending in all of these units to attack here, but they're, none of the timing is right. Like, these infantry are way too far behind. The Soul Grinder, uh, these, this you know, Hellforge host also should have waited for the Soul Grinder. At the very least, though, the Soul Grinder... And the Bloodthirster do manage to get into combat against Kugath for a decent amount of time here. 2v1, this engagement's going to go okay for me. I can at least dish out some serious damage. Also, potentially nerf the healing that Kugath is going to put into himself. But honestly, with the Bloodletters, uh, sorry, the uh, Plague Bears so close in support, you can see here the Festering Stooges are unaccounted for. I do have the regular Exalted Plague Bears bogged down at least. And the uh, Forsaken have been occupied by the dual hand weapon warriors, but they definitely should have gone after the Festering Stooges because the Death's Heads are going to come in and just do an obscene amount of damage. Uh, a little bit of a janky fight. <laughs> uh, Exalted Bloodthirster gets a little stuck in here. These two don't actually have... Oof, right in the face. Don't have matched combat animations. It looks like the Soul Grinder also failing to do any attack animations, which is very frustrating for sure. He's taken a lot of damage as well. Uh, Festering Stooges just came in and racked up an insane amount of value. Yeah, 1285 on a single kill. Basically all of that coming from throwing their death's heads at my single entities, which is just, <laughs> you know, really, really good. Uh, in terms of supply, the current patch, you get 15 base supply. And because we're dead even right now in terms of uh, victory tickets, I'm just now taking a slight lead here with almost a three cap, but you can see that he has pushed me off of the objective number one with the Flesh Hounds now falling back. A little bit of a weird situation. I'm starting to think that that all-in on the center was a little bit early and maybe just overall a mistake. Definitely overall mistake. There's no question about that, but perhaps if I'd waited to attempt even just another uh, like two or three minutes on this sort of all-in in the center, he maybe could have held enough victory tickets to really guarantee victory, but at this point, I'm a little nervous. We're slightly ahead, and I do have this center objective secured, but probably not for long. Uh, of course, Kugath, with that new effect, is going to be just hitting all of my units with that nasty drain, right? And it's not so much of an issue for the higher model count units, but even for the Minotaurs and Soul Grinder, it is apparent, right? The Exalted Bloodletters, the uh, spell resistance does help against that damage, right? Reducing it by 25%, but even still, definitely don't want to be taking that damage, and the Warriors are just going to be completely useless against it. They are, you know, high value, uh, heavy infantry, 
just, yeah, they're ideal targets to get drained out by an effect like that. So, very quickly, my push falls apart here into the center, and, uh, you know, Bloodthirst Circuit went down earlier. Soul Grinder also about to go down now. Things are looking pretty rough for me. I'm definitely feeling the sting of that uh, blunder. Definitely a risky play, I admit, and I wish, yeah, just if I had waited another couple minutes, maybe it would have been uh, the right play. But regardless, objective number one now secured. My opponent also soon securing objective number two. I have a little bit of a lead on points, but definitely not enough to uh, hold him off. So let's see if I can maybe get the spawn onto the capture. This unit of spawn did come through, summoned, and on those get on those plague bears. The unit of spawn also coming through. You know, even though the minotaurs did get a cost reduction, I think in most situations the spawn are just more cost effective, especially for domination where... Uh, you know, capture weight of monstrous infantry is very good. The leadership also is really important, right? The fact that spawn are unbreakable, unable to be terrified especially, but just in general, be, being unbreakable, they're going to fight until the bitter end with their full capture weight on the points, right? So uh, I do think just in, in terms of my army composition, like I wanted to try out the Minotaurs just to see how they would do. I don't, I'm not super impressed with them. Definitely wish I would have just traded them out for some more spawn. And instead of all winning on the center, obviously, maybe send some of those spawn over to support this force on objective number one. Maybe send another spawn to help defend over here on objective number three. And just kind of leave Kugath to his own devices. You know, he's going to be able to throw a bunch of uh, his missiles, do quite a bit of damage at range. But you really, I mean, the amount of HP he, ha he has, how tanky he is... With the Mortis effect now, unless you have some missiles, it's almost impossible to snipe him in melee. Um, and he's just going to eat all of your units, uh, just make them puke all over themselves, you know, uh, poop their brains out and just die on the floor. So there you go. That's basically what's happening to my entire army here. You can see the spawn. We're able to come in and do quite a bit of damage. I mean, the spawn of corn, definitely no pushover, but uh, just getting completely worn down. The spawn of Nurgle also contributing quite nicely here as well and some damage in return so nice spawn fest here in the center and uh still no catch-up mechanic even though in terms of army value damage i am significantly down anytime you're down on army value damage to nurgle is really bad right but because we're so even on victory tickets he's just now barely about to take the lead um yeah i'm not getting any extra income from the catch-up mechanic the regular base supply right there so an unfortunate situation for sure but it is what it is you know this is one of these reasons i play these games on the new patch uh, do something risky like this in a in sort of a practice situation I also was recording this game live for another video project that i'm working on so needed some live domination gameplay so we're just here to have some fun mostly try out some things uh yeah the minotaur gambit unfortunately did not work the minotaur all into the center uh, the risk did not pay off and came back to bite me, but still a great battle, to be honest. Still pretty impressed. And I do think, um, you know, Nurgle's in an interesting spot right now. I need to get some more games in with them, but I do think, had I not blundered and, uh, you know, just kept the split push going for as long as I could and then maybe try and all in the center, um, you know, like I said, a couple minutes later, I think it probably would have worked. Nurgle, uh, the... the what are they called? The Toads getting cheaper did help, and my opponent didn't bring any of them here, but I do think in this matchup they can help deal with Blood Letters. Uh, I need to play around with this matchup some more and see, though, in terms of both domination and the land battles, kind of where things are at. But Kugath, for both Korn and Slanesh, Kugath is really, really scary. The inability to shoot him down with any kind of missiles uh, is going to be nasty. And even Korn, you would think, you know, with the elite fire damage... Um, melee prowess of corn they might be able to just straight up beat him in melee and that's just not the case in my experience both from games i've watched and casted and games i've played it's just really really tough to take kugath out but uh, any units i'm just throwing here into the center are going to get some damage done they're going to come in initially and do tons of damage on the charge maybe wipe a couple of weakened units then inevitably kugath will waddle over just park his toilet seat and you know open up the flaps so to speak just uh, dump mud all over them. So there you go. <laughs> oh, man. It is, you know, not that uh, it's necessarily a bad thing. I think maybe they could address some other things about Kugath to make it less oppressive for certain factions. But, I mean, in my mind, he should be better. A lot of the other legendary lords do come with the trade-off, though. Right now, I like his speed. 
I think is not enough of a trade-off versus the regular exalted great unclean ones, so I don't know exactly how I would address it. I mean, I hesitate to say that Kugath is OP. I think maybe, again, for Slanesh and Korn, he is going to be a big problem, no doubt, but for the factions that have access to missiles, I mean, you just shoot him to death and not a lot he can do about it, so... Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about the estate of Kugath's balance, but I definitely felt the balance here in this particular battle uh, that failed all in in the center. This, that combination, granted, again, my support was not right, and the Festering Stooges uh, helping out Kugath there made a huge difference for sure. Had they not been involved, that fight would have been a lot more even, but I think maybe I still would have lost, honestly. Hard to say, but uh, these two single entities. In the past, I've had success sniping Kugath with them going 2v1, but today it just didn't work out for me. Uh, the Blood Letters, though, performed awesome. I mean, Exalted Blood Letters have always been great in this matchup. The ROR, even doubly so for the armor, and the fact they get the Hellblade even sooner. They can literally murder a unit of Nurglings and get it almost instantly, right? So, uh, yeah, for the rest of my army here, definitely disappointed by the Minotaurs. The spawns basically performed about the same or less cost, so definitely think they're just going to be more cost-effective in most situations. I think maybe in the Corn Mirror, you still want to take Minotaurs with corn. I was a fan of that pick before. But uh, yeah, Kugath consistently these days is getting insane, insane value. So definitely watch out for him. If you're playing against Nurgle, uh, essentially you just want to try and avoid wherever he is. Or if he does manage to get isolated, maybe you can go after him. But if he's fighting with support, try and fight somewhere else. Uh, generally, you can get slower, weak, uh, you know, isolated Nurgle units by themselves and just take them out and profit that way. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button every time I upload a new video. You'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.